recorded this year. Um, with me, as Elsa mentioned, uh, are two of those access rangers in Caithness and Sutherland, uh, Andrew and Derek. Uh, so at the end of the presentation, they will uh, relate some specific information about some of the sites and incidents that they've come across. Um, but I'll start off with a general sort of overview and a bit of background. Some of you may be aware of some of this, so I hope you'll bear with me. Uh, but I presume there'll be some that may not be aware, so uh, I'm probably going to uh, start from the beginning to some degree. OK, uh, right, and sharing that now. I take it, is that visible to everybody? Yeah, nods, that's great. OK, right. Well, the Access Ranger team is part of the Council's Visitor Management Plan, um, and we created one for 2022, and we had a similar one for 2021. We're currently in uh, debating and hoping to put one together for a longer period of time, hopefully a five-year plan from 23 to 27. Um, but uh, when, you know, obviously in the release from lockdown after COVID, many of you will have been aware that uh, there were no rangers whatsoever. Um, the countryside rangers that High Life Highland had were on furlough, um, and those were the previous council rangers. Um, and there was lots of people out there just behaving as they wished, uh, with no one sort of giving any advice or information. Um, and obviously, people were feeling a bit of a relief after after lockdown. Um, and a lot of places were closed, so people were camping that perhaps hadn't done before and in much greater numbers than previously. So we realised after many, many complaints through the council for all sorts of reasons that we needed to put some action together and we needed a cross-service approach because it, whilst camping and its associated issues is, a, is an access uh, in, within the access remit, um, you know, there was waste management issues, the bins weren't getting emptied and fly tipping was occurring and, um, you know, these needed collecting, but also the toilets needed uh, some attention. There's various issues on parking and roads. So all of this needed to come together within this visitor management plan um, and the access rangers were, were the access team's response and, and contribution to that. But we needed to know that these rangers could work not only with the visitors who were there, but also the communities that were being affected. Oh, excuse me. Just put that on mute. Um, so yes, we, we know this is very important that the rangers need to work with both sides uh, of this, the people that actually live and work here, as well as those coming to stay and visit. So, sorry, went a bit too far. So we advertised and recruited uh, a team of rangers, got them kitted out in a uniform so that were instantly recognisable um, and so that people were aware why they were coming to be sp spoken to and about what. Um, and with the uh, an instantly recognisable van too with the national logo so that even people from outside uh, this area you know, may have seen this logo on their local ranger service, uh, whether it be a local country park down in the central belt or, or elsewhere in Scotland. Um, so, you know, a lot of the people as they sort of escaped their, uh, you know, urban dwelling, perhaps expecting the far north to look like this, blue skies, empty beaches, um, you know, the idyllic setting uh, to escape uh, having been enclosed in four walls for many months. But after a period of time, obviously, this is the sort of thing that they were coming across and you no doubt have seen it close to where you are too. So full car parks, camping all over the place, uh, toileting in the bushes and overflowing bins. And th those problems are just extending. These campsites sometimes get abandoned, fires, um, you know, getting more than just wood burnt in them. Um, and the disposable barbecue is probably one of the banes of the ranger service. Um, so those issues, uh, we've touched them on them, you know, the traffic management, you know, cars that are just, uh, sorry, should, there we go. Uh, yeah, cars just abandoned by the roadside, even with uh, double yellow lines. Um, these are car parks over spilling and verge parking, um, making it difficult for either bus services or emergency services to get through. Um, the irresponsible camping, which is just the amount and the size of these is just certainly not appropriate under the access code um, guidance. 
abandoned campsites, people are buying cheap tents and then just leaving them behind. You know, out outdoor toileting is part of the camping issue, but just going behind bushes in sometimes in inappropriate places uh, and the quantity that uh, seems to develop over time. Those overflowing bins uh, with the vast increase in number of people visiting. Uh, the litter, it's sometimes it's not just visitors. This is probably fly tipped. Local people are sort of contributing to some of these problems too. Um, the fires, you know, with wood that's either chopped down or taken from felling sites. Um, sometimes it's even stacked timber that can be burnt on these fires. And it leads on to community frustration and, uh, you know, things that just aren't really helping the matter in the long term or prevent or providing a good picture to those that we want visiting our, our, our area. So blocked roads, blocked uh, parking areas with with uh, silage bays, locked gates, signs that maybe are a little bit inappropriate and we can work with people to have a more appealing sign and give correct information. So the role of the rangers is to promote and encourage that responsible access, uh, to talk to people, give the right advice, give uh, an information on what they can and can do, where to go, the best places to see things. So it's friendly, welcoming advice. It's certainly not you know, saying uh, being a, a hostile approach and telling people just what they can't do, it's more what they can do and how to do that in a in a considerate manner. And so engaging with those visitors and also working with the communities on trying to find solutions that would work for everybody. They patrol an assigned area on a regular basis. Uh, it's usually three days a week, at least three days a week. Um, that may be a Friday, Saturday, Sunday if they're the busiest days, but sometimes that's adapted uh, in certain areas. Um, and I think Andrew would mention that because we've discovered that certainly the Durness and Northwest corner is often busier on a Tuesday and a Wednesday uh, due to travelers going around the, the North Coast 500. Um, and then as they patrol, they provide uh, data uh, monitoring those sites uh, and report to different services uh, should issues have arisen. And in the course of doing that, developing the relationships with land managers, so owners of various sites, but other organisations, uh, whether they have um, a ranger services themselves, like John Muir Trust uh, has uh, a ranger in, in um, Sandwood Bay area, but also other organisations be less so in the far north, but I'm trying to think if National Trust for Scotland maybe don't have a range up in the far north. Um, but Forestry and Land Scotland, certainly, and Nature Scott uh, that may also have uh, rangers and other staff out in the uh, in the countryside. But also, um, very importantly, this you know all the rangers have contacted the, all the community councils in their area and work closely with some. Some haven't responded, but when we do, we will work as closely as we can. And and, and in between times, they will undertake you know, any site maintenance and repairs um, that might be occurring on some of these sites and monitor the core paths. Uh, and this is work that we hope to continue in the winter as well uh, so that it's ready for next season. So we have 18 rangers and four seasonal uh, visitor site wardens uh, around Highland this year. That's the sort of breakdown of them. Um, the site wardens focusing on a much smaller area. So this year we had someone specifically around the Durness beaches and coast, as well as Andrew covering the wider sort of northwest Sutherland. Um, and we had a ranger covering north Sutherland. And uh, one based in Olapool who covers the Assint part of Sutherland, as well as Hoyuch in Westeros. Uh, and we also have a ranger uh, over in the east he, uh, who covers East Ross and Sutherland. He's based in Tain, but he will cover up as far as Helmsdale. So uh, we'll see a list of those in a, in a minute. Uh, the Caithness sites, that gives an indication of all the sites that Derek is covering. Um, See so if he gets information about other sites that need uh, a quick check uh, or maybe causing an issue, he will go out to those, but you'll see them predominantly around the North Coast 500 route, but a few inland as well. And in Sutherland, See so much more extensive area. Let's say we've got uh, Andrew who covers the northwest area, Chaz who covered the Durness coast um, and is now covering North Sutherland as well because uh, Graham had to leave us for personal reasons. Uh, so uh, Chaz covers North Sutherland during the weekend, um, the Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then goes to Durness midweek, which, as I mentioned earlier, we found is is pretty busy on those Tuesday, Wednesday period. 
um, Michael down in Ullapool covers Collyhocken and all these ascent sites, and Jake who covers the uh, the East Sutherland area. Okay, now we've got a gallery of some of the uh, picture nasties uh, that we've experienced over the time. Some of these I think I've probably shown already, but just to give you an indication of what we come across, you know, sometimes some huge tents and equipment being left behind. Uh, wooden structures like handrails or tables sometimes vandalized to use on fires. Um, those fires can often contain bits of plastic cans, you know, trying to burn all sorts of stuff that uh, you know isn't going to burn and just leaves a mess, an unsightly mess for future visitors. The chopping down of, of trees to feed those fires. Um, all sorts of litter, as I mentioned, disposable barbecues just get left behind so often, uh, probably because they're too hot to take away, uh, but that just leaves future problems for future visitors or the rangers to pick them up. Those overflowing bins, of course, um, despite stickers on them now, I don't think it's these stickers, but you'll have seen that most bins now have stickers, you know, don't leave anything beside this bin. That is still fly tipping. Often the rangers will take away some of this stuff that's left behind and then report in the full bin. The waste management service also have some seasonal staff that will collect full bins and replace them with empty bins, um, but they're covering even larger areas than the rangers are. So uh, whilst they do try to get there as quickly as possible, obviously it can't be necessarily immediately. Uh, abandoned campsites, you know, this was just left all left behind on a beach. This one actually was down in Arasig outside your area, I know, but you know, we have experienced this in, I think there's, well, we'll see figures later, but there was about 45 abandoned campsites this year. Um, not always to this extent, but can be. And of course, the inevitable disposable barbecue. Um, and then there can be some disgusting things like bags of fish. Um, and this, as you can see, is everything, including the kitchen sink can be found um, by our rangers as fly tipping sites. So, you know, but this is definitely sort of camping litter, the disposable barbecues, but deck chairs and everything else. Um, sometimes it might be vandalism to the trees. Some might consider it art, um, but it probably didn't do the tree much good. Um, but the rangers will work with some communities on beach cleans, collecting all sorts of litter that's been left behind uh, and you obviously the vans have come in very ha handy as well. Uh, we could take that all the way to the nearest uh, recycling site and another occasion there just filling the van with with uh, a community beach clean. Um, on fires we uh, are putting up signs where we know uh, sites are inappropriate. That's usually in wooded woodland or forests, um, but also might be peaty ground. You know, these are sites that are definitely inappropriate for fires and you've probably seen some of those signs before. I mean, this one uh, was caught just in time. Somebody had a fire inside this tree that could have been a potential disaster. Um, so the rangers engaging around, you know, going out on patrol, they have these volunteer work days. They talk to as many motorhomes and campers as they come across. Um, they've got uh, regarding litter, the, you know, there's messages on the move, so we've got these stickers on the, on the van, and as I mentioned, these are on the on litter bins as well. Uh, collect those litters and volunteer beach cleans. Outdoor toileting, we've been removing some sort of bushes that are often used as toileting sites, uh, so that they're less appealing to go behind, and you can see the kind of mess that was behind that one. Uh, we've got these signs telling people where the nearest toilets are. Uh, they were handwritten last year. This year, we've got a printed version, which you know gets a little bit more authoritative and people take a bit more notice of it with a QR code with a map where all the toilets are as well. So uh, that's probably a little bit more useful than we had. And um, certainly in, in conjunction with the Geopark, we created these little poo bags, which is advice on responsible camping um, and also some sort of uh, small bags for people to pick up their own waste as you would uh, for a dog, so why not for yourself in areas where that's a particular problem? Um, and Andrew is probably going to mention cannabine, which uh, we know is, is a real hot spot for this. Um, so on fires, and this again is cannabine, you know, covering the fires with sand or seaweed. Uh, the fire sites at least makes them less unsightly, but also helps recovery. And also if people do light fires, if it's covered with sand, they do tend to use where the sand is, so it prevents further damage. So it is, it is a, a bit of a solution. Um, I've mentioned the signs and there are some of these signs which are then respected. Uh, we are seeing signs of recovery. 
so they are working. On parking, uh, the rangers will, uh, when they come across some really irresponsible parking, hand out these warning notices. It looks like a penalty charge, but isn't, uh, but it, and at the very least has the deterrent effect so that others don't park there as well. Um, sometimes some people get a bit upset when they think they've got a charge, um, but uh, you know we'll explain that situation to them and hopefully uh, uh, calm them down after that. We've been helping the parking services team put in uh, no overnight parking signs in a few locations you might have seen around. Uh, I think there's one at Kinloch Burvey and I think the ring, you know, Andrew and Derek will probably mention one or two others. Um, and this barrier fencing, I think this is one that was put in uh, at Durness by the community, but we've been doing similar uh, fencing. I think some at uh, Strathy in the north, and I think Derek's done some in and done it as well. Uh, so we'll put in some of this uh, diamond rail fencing to prevent off uh, dri people driving off and outside car parks. We've got uh, this generic motorhome leaflet, and I know Venture North have, have produced one for the Case Ness and Sutherland, so we're using that one too. So sorry, I haven't got the picture of yours on there. Perhaps I should have replaced that one. Um, but uh, hopefully you've all seen that. But we find that is a very, very useful uh, sort of introduction to people, you know, to asking them if they've got a copy of this leaflet, and they're usually very grateful for it, um, providing information uh, that they, they require for their trip and also uh, you know, where facilities are. Um, so the rangers, the you know, so that public awareness uh, is on that regular patrols and that face to face engagement, um, that recognition by everybody. We have a Facebook page too, which I think some of you have, uh, are aware of and are, are following. Um, you know, we've got thousands of followers on that now, and it gets uh, often, get, especially on the controversial issues, gets very high involvement and engagement. Um, there's numerous uh, news releases been. Uh, put out by our communications team uh, with this responsible messaging that the Rangers are putting out every day, but also that that's put to a wider audience and that communi uh, continued communication with the communities and developing those relationships. So when it comes to monitoring and the data, and uh, per perhaps this is something that you're particularly interested in, um, so we collect information on these items. Uh, hopefully you can see that um, the parked cars, motorhomes, tents, fires, litter, toileting, the people, the number of people we the rangers see on that patrol and then speak to and other details um, like whether they've issued notices or reports uh, to the to other services in the council. So for Sutherland, uh, this is what we've got. Now, if we included uh, the four areas and I know part of those are in Russia, uh, so I hope you forgive. I couldn't quite separate those out. That would take a, a quite a bit more time to separate Koyukan assets and East Ross and Sutherland. So I have included those in, so I hope you forgive me for that, but it's still part of North um, North Highland. Um, right, I mean, I can leave that up for you to absorb the, the figures yourself, but I'll, hi I'll highlight some specific items here in comparison to the totals um, in 2021 that um, see we had we started a bit earlier this year and we did have one extra person uh, with Chaz covering the Durness area. And so the number of sites monitored and visited um, is considerably higher this year than last year and therefore the number of patrols is also a bit higher. But even when you take that into consideration, the number of cars and the number of motorhomes is considerably higher than last year. So there seems no let up at all uh, in the number of motorhomes that's visiting the north. In fact, uh, potentially uh, quite an increase. Uh, but where we do see a bit of a decrease is in the number of tents, uh, not on campsites. So the informal camping has gone down uh, a wee bit, um, but there's still issues related to camping, even with those sorts of numbers, such as uh, abandoned tents. We still had two in the, in the north um, and the fires. So perhaps all those fires may not just be overnighters, but maybe day trippers, or it may even be motorhomers that are lighting fires um, as well. Um, and 14 of those fires had to be put out because they were considered a risk or certainly in an inappropriate location, um, which is very similar to last year, even with a higher camping number. It's only two different. Um, however, with Chaz at Durness and obviously with the others as well, uh, we've issued considerably more parking notices, which is probably a reflection of the increase in traffic as well. Um, 
And as far as litter goes in the Sutherland area, uh, more has been collected this year than last year. So that problem isn't going away. Um, and also there's been more toileting on sites as well. Um, motorhome waste dumping, the black waste. Uh, now this is virtually a chemical waste spill we're talking about here, uh, of which at present the council has no means of clearing up. So it would remain a hazard. Um, is a very similar number to, to last year, 17 this year and 18 last year. Uh, so you know, the best we can do in those look, those are either to tape it off to warn people that there is this, this hazard or to cover it in sand. Um, not ideal, but that's all we can do at the moment for that sort of uh, incident. Um, and as for overflowing bins or, or other issues that uh, they feel they need to report to other services, you know, we had considerably more reports this year at 63. Um, as far as dogs go, there's a f yeah, uh, we've noticed more dogs under control, but also um, you know, over three times as many um, out of control uh, that may have posed a, posed a risk to livestock. Um, and also you can see a higher numbers observed uh, of people in the area but also those spoken to, um, spoken to an extra 500 people this year to advise them pr primarily about the outdoor access code and uh, where facilities might be that they'd find useful. So you can see that the, the issues in Sutherland certainly are still extremely high. The only thing that is really decreasing is, is the number of offsite tents. Um, and so I think there's still considerable need for a range of service uh, to keep an eye on these issues. When it comes to Caithness, it's a very similar story. Um, you can see I've highlighted the higher figures uh, for this year as opposed to last year, and it is pretty pretty similar, um, except for the fact that there are more tents in Caithness this year than there were last year. Um, but motorhome issue, motorhome numbers, sorry, and uh, cars and litter and toileting are all hugely increased on last year. Um, and also the fact that Derek's quite a chatty person, and I think he's been going around and making sure the message gets spread far uh, even wider than our ranger last year, who also uh, performed pretty well and got very uh, good responses from uh, Stuart uh, in 2021. But uh, yeah, it seems Derek gets to speak to even more people this year. So I'll pass over to Andrew now, who will talk about some of the things that he's actually come across on some of the sites in the northwest of Sutherland. Andrew, over to you. Thanks, Phil, and thanks to Elsa and the Venture North team for having me along. Um, so yeah, I'm Andrew, I'm the West Sutherland Ranger. So I cover the, the sort of area from Kyle Skew Ridge all the way around to Loch Erebol. Um, so that includes the Scourry, Kinloch Bervey and Durness Community Council areas. Um, so the, it's been, as, as Phil has rightly highlighted, it's been a, a challenging season as a ranger. There's been a lot of difficulties, um, primarily in the sort of West Sutherland area. Fires and off-road driving seem to be very common problems that I'm coming across. So this is a picnic site over near Kyle Skew in a lay-by. And then we have fire sites at uh, Shegra in the top in the middle. And then um, on a lay-by by Loch Stack on the right hand side and then the the lower middle picture that's from a, a vehicle driving off road and completely ignoring the the rules of the road and taking their vehicle onto soft bloody ground and damaging the verge uh kinnabine beach um you hit the next slide please phil and the other significant problems we have are as you as i'm sure you're all aware uh, toileting and um, particularly at kinnabine is still a significant problem Roof tents that we see on the lower right there are a problem throughout the area. These ones are in particular are down at Drummond Pier, just outside Kinloch Bervey. And then again, we have more fire site problems, a lot of potential fires in piles of wood that have been collected. And in the bottom left, I think that sign for the no fishing without permit wasn't up at the start of the season. So I imagine someone from Goulin Estate came along and erected that to try and discourage people from using that site, both for fishing and also for informal camping in the mess that's been made in that spot, that spear. Uh, that's by Drockymore at the uh, Kyle of Southern, uh, sorry, Kyle of Durness. Um, next slide, please. Phil. Um, so yeah, we've been working with the 
Durness Community Council to implement solutions at Balnakeel, where we've seen lots of problems with overnight parking by the cemetery and uh, just parking irresponsibly in passing places, as you can see on the right. Um, so yeah, we've been working to both monitor the parking as it, ha as it occurs, and then we've also erected signs to discourage overnight parking, particularly at the cemetery site, which is very sensitive to the locals. And then moving on from that, we've also been monitoring the, the camping. Um, so particularly at Kinnabeen, we've erected these signs in the middle to try and inform people of how to behave responsibly. And on the top right, you can see examples of the habitat restoration fencing we've put up. So that's around these particularly fragile areas of Macher, where these should be covered in beautiful wildflower meadows in the summer. And these, these areas are just being both trampled and scorched by significant numbers of tents, still causing a problem even this summer. And on the left, we've got a sign that I put up at a scary headland next to the cemetery, where they've also had significant problems of people informally camping, which is against the Scottish Outdoor Access Code to be camping next to a cemetery, leaving a bit of mess and toileting there as well. And then on the lower right, I put up a sign to just inform people of where the nearest toilets are. Uh, at a lay by near Kalski, that one that I showed in the first slide that has a significant toileting problem as well. And that's when public toilets are only, you know, five miles away. So people hopefully just need to be directed. And then I'll pass you on to, to Derek. OK, th thank you very much, Andrew. Yes, uh, I'll take over. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Lady Chairman. Yeah, just some of the things I've been up to. One of my busiest uh, places, uh, place where everybody wants to go to is uh, Dunnet Head, the headland at, uh, at Dunnet, uh, the most northerly point in Scotland, as I'm sure we, we all know. Um, it's kind of managed by a uh, local, the Dunnet uh, and Broch uh, grazing committees. Um, the road, single track road in for about two and a half miles from the nearest junction. And uh, we do, we do have a slight problem in that People think they're they're entering the wilderness, albeit it's not a very big one. And that uh, as soon as they do that, they've got the right to they need to be cooking their food over a live fire, things like that, which is um, is all very well. But it's a, it's a big peatland, so we, we have been successful this year, and uh, the heathland has not gone on fire. So we can maybe count that as a successful season, um, albeit that uh, single track road, and it just it's taken a bit of a beating. Um, the grazing committee, conscious of that there's local fishermen that like to um, fish in all the lochs uh, with wee places to leave their vehicles behind, doesn't want these places to necessarily shut off to, to the fishermen, but they get used by, by campers. Most of them are soft ground, it does get chewed up. Um, as you're going in and out, people, uh, especially foreigners, it seems, they just... Uh, when they're meeting one another in a single track road, the, the first their first option seems to be to to go to the verge. So there's a lot of verges getting getting chewed up. It's it's not pretty. Um, I agreed to to shut off one uh, one lay by there with the the permission of the grazing committee chairman uh, because it's it was kind of down out of sight in a quarry and his thinking was that uh, people uh, get up to even more uh, mess and whatnot when they're unseen if they're being seen by a neighbour even at a hundred yards or from people passing on the road, it moderates their behaviour. So I was able to put up a, a diamond rail fence there, uh, kept people out. Tenters will still go in, still kind of get used as a toilet from time to time. And that's the first one, first slide there. On the right, there's a, a Land Rover, a hired Land Rover. And if you look carefully, you'll see that it's actually up to its axles in, in mud. So this chap, I think he... Uh, Hired his uh, vehicle, something something in England, and he's he's driven up, and he's come right through the the headland, and he's crossed the I don't know if people know it, crossed the cattle grid into the car park. There's a a, a neck, and then it widens out to where where camper vans, motorhomes can actually stay the night, encouraged by by the council. It's set up for them now. Uh, he he almost got there, but ten yards short of it, he just decided he probably showing off, go in the grass and to get a better view, he went 20, 30 feet and absolutely bogged himself down. So it was in a night I wasn't working, but I was, I was sent the photo and uh, he's somehow managed to get himself out. 
Um, I'm sure his kit included a, a spade, but he uh, he didn't see fit to even try to fill in the, the absolute mess he's created and left behind. Just huge troughs that could be there for years if they're um, left to themselves. So that's the, that's the downside, just ignorant people making a mess of our lovely landscape. So we'll try and stop that from happening. If, if I'd been there, it would have been, no, you can't do that. But uh, obviously he slipped through the net. Um, bottom left, just uh, at Castle Hill. Oh, sorry, Castle Hill and uh, at Castle Town, the, they had a big information uh, sign for a, for a lovely walk there around uh, the old uh, slabstone quarries. Uh, Sign had fallen off, maybe hadn't been been put on very well in the first place. So just I was told that go and pick up this sign at Dunnett Pavilion, uh, find something sticky to stick it on with. And when I went along, lo and behold, it was in a, a huge uh, stainless steel case, and I weighed it, it was twenty four kilograms. But uh, I got it apart, cleaned it up, refurbished it, and uh, put it on a bit more securely. So the Castletown Community Council were delighted with getting their sign back. So thank you, Phil. Uh, just other jobs I've managed to do. Um, I've now uh, Victoria Walk in, in Thurso. There's a fence there. It's a lovely walk from Thurso down to Scrabster. Uh, be half a mile long or more. Uh, plenty of people walk it in the summer. It's beside the caravan park. So fence just fallen into disrepair there. So I was able to to go along and uh, for very little money indeed. Just, just the effort of... Uh, I think it was about forty pound of wood, and uh, there was twenty, thirty runs needing done, a bit of straightening, and uh, I've been working on that uh, the last uh, couple of weeks. And minus one hole in the ground, I've, I've finished the fencing, so uh, hopefully improved it there. Um, then another job that I enjoyed doing was uh, uh, renewed two of the styles on the on the Holborn Head uh, Trail. It's uh, from Scrabs, there you cl climb past the lighthouse and go out to Holborn Head, and you're you're looking over at Hoy and and done it. Uh, very very popular walk. So two of the two of the styles were in really shaky and uh, just been knocked by sheep and trampled and just the weather as well. So I was able to to renew two of them. So that's one of them there, and that's been stress tested by some tourists almost as soon as I built it. So that was good to see some foreigners. And bottom left is. Uh, yeah, that, this is Puffin Cove at the, uh, the border between Caithness and Sutherland, which has been a, one of our biggest hotspots all year regarding, well, an issue, two issues. One's the disturbance to Puffins, which uh, there's been a lot of talk about, but it's just whatever's happened uh, hasn't been, there's been very little intervention. But the other one is just, just road safety. There's uh, on that photo, just to the, to the right is a maybe a five vehicle parking space, and just off to the left, out of sight, is a, a only the width of a car. You could get two or three parked, but when people park on both sides of the road and you know get ready to go for a, a mile hike down to see puffins, they're, they're not concentrating, and uh, just and cars are coming past 60, 70 miles an hour. They've just climbed out a ray in one direction and they're getting a bit of open road. So if, there's been various things done to try and reduce the dangerous parking, but this photo just shows that however much you, you block off, the tourists will just go to the next bit they think is available and the park there. So that's a pretty poorly parked camper van. Um, just while I was visiting one time, so he got some corrective advice that maybe sent him off to turn and held a space for him in the what was then the official car park, which has now been fenced off. So the issue is just going to be different for next year, but it's uh, certainly not solved, I don't think. So that's Puffin Cove. Um, yeah, just a uh, couple of weeks of the summer, I was I was maybe waiting for wood to build the styles and uh, just saw that there was an issue. Uh, this is Duncansby Head Road up to where, this, where the Duncansby stacks are and, and the lighthouse there. So single track road again, and it was just falling apart with uh, far more traffic than it was ever intended to uh, to have on it, I'm sure. So just one of the worst places where there was a pothole on the right, pothole on the left, really unavoidable. And uh, even once I'd filled it, people were still 
this is what would happen in the road. We'd just get ever ever wider with people driving off at the verge, getting getting ruined. So um, I had to do something about that as well. And I also just saw there was a couple of uh, passing place signs knocked down, so I was I was just able to dig them back in. So it's it's not our core function by any means, and uh, I'm not running about filling potholes the whole time because that that's not our not our job and uh, not the intention, but. If it kind of, you know, that just improves tourist access and to the locals. So it's uh, in an emergency, can be done. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, as we go on our rounds, we uh, just rubbish that we've, we've picked up of uh, just going bottom left, first of all. That was a, a bike that I happened to see just in the, in the river at Leibster Harbour. It was. I don't know, it's maybe 20, 30 feet down, but I had a grappling uh, hook in my van, so I was a bit of sport on a Sunday morning, getting the, the bike out of there. The The main one up the top was just, I uh, took that out of a pond in Rumster Forest, so that maybe been there for years, and uh, once I'd done that, it was a bit of a hot potato as to who would take it away, should be the landowner, but... Uh, uh, forestry weren't very communicative, so I ended up two, three runs in my own van. Um, the rest just um, just rubbish that's been left behind. There's uh, uh, a sign for a hotel that got blown off in the wind, and uh, well, nobody was in a hurry to pick that up, and it just collected other things. So uh, on the right, that's the, the site restored. So it, it's just great to, you know, there's, there's other people, organisations picking stuff up as well, but there's there's plenty of rubbish and uh, slowly but surely, I think the ranger servers are helping to keep the whole county tidier, which gives a, a better uh, impression of the county to, to, to visitors. And um, yeah, just in conclusion, uh, it's seen as it's Venture Scotland we're, we're, we're speaking to and about, it's uh, their maps have been brilliant over the, over the summer. I've uh, loved ha handing them out. It's uh, if I get people saying uh, Dumbeath, Dumbeath Harbour is a very popular uh, spot to stay and I speak to a lot of people there. And uh, when I'm doing that, I, can, I hand out the maps and we open them out. And it's an amazing the number of people. Some people are very organised when, they, when they're when they coming through Caithness and they, they know to they want to go and see Walago Steps and they want to go and see Sinclair Garnigal Castles. But some people don't know about them. and. Uh, you open the map out and you say, oh, do you know about Walago Steps? And we all oh, no, no. Well, be, you point them in the direction there. And, uh, well, the world-class think they're going to go castles. And uh, some people are even in the Duncansby Head car park and aren't really aware of the stacks. So it's uh, it's good to point these things out. So, you know, some people do the North Coast 500. It's not, Case Ness is maybe a, it's slightly different from other areas. It's uh, so maybe somewhere they're just looking to head through and make time, not spend a lot of time in a lot of people. But you know, if you've pointed out, if I pointed out these places, that's three places that can easily take them uh, a whole day to to see, and maybe they'll spend a night in the county where they otherwise wouldn't have. So, so the maps are are brilliant in helping out with that. And uh, yeah, so I think that I'll I'll stop there. It's probably spoken enough. Hand back to Phil. Okay, well, I think that's probably given you a good flavour of what we've got in two of the sort of busy areas around uh, this, uh, the county. Obviously, you've um, got the other ranges too that are mentioned, um, probably finding very similar situations. And as Derek said, I know they find Venture North's map extremely useful. Um, so thank you and well done for producing that. And I hope others have found that well, uh, that as well. Um, right, so yeah, I can obviously open that up to any questions that you might have. If you don't mind, or I think Ilsa was just a way to say, we've got a very short presentation, but we're very conscious that we actually want this today is really about the access rangers. So just while we're recording, I think we'll flick through our slides. So that's all together. And then we stop recording so people can ask questions and we can all have a conversation around the table. Are you OK with that, Philip? Yes, that's fine. Yeah, excellent. I'll stop sharing this and then let you pull yours up. 
Yeah, thank, thanks a lot, Phil. Um, yeah, and it was great to see all the work the Rangers um, have done and for you to sort of bring some of those figures to life. Um, yeah, really fantastic work. work. And thank you all for coming along and contributing to, to the event. Um, I, to Kathy, I think you've got the presentation. Are you okay to share it? Um, I am, and obviously uh, this is when Ilsa jumps in when I get lost with uh, technicalities. <laughs> is that showing okay? Yeah, that's good. That's brilliant. OK, so we'll just uh, so I'm going to rush through quite quickly because uh, we do, as I said before, we really want uh, people to get the chance to uh, chat and ask questions from our access rangers. So where do Venture North uh, come in? We've gone through quite a step change in the last year from a fundamentally a, a marketing and promotional a organization to a destination management organization. So that involves lots of different aspects, including visitor management, workforce development, uh, net zero agenda and business support, like, for instance, uh, providing this talking tourism so we can get our communities and businesses and key stakeholders around uh, to talk about the issues and the positive and the negative as, as to what's happening in the region. So I'll just go on to say what we do in terms of responsible messaging. I wasn't sure if uh, Philip would cover, but Venture North, um, you know, we sit alongside uh, the Highland Council Access Rangers on what's called the North Highland Visitor Management Group. And that's where, you know, numerous agencies run by the Highland Council, you have Venture North, you have Nature Scott, you've all got the fire service, RNLI, lots of different uh, key agencies that are directly involved in visitor management. Philip mentioned one there, but the waste agent, waste, I'm going to say the wrong department in Highland Council. So actually during the peak season, we meet twice, you know, twice a month, it goes down to once a month. So this is where we work with the agencies to hear on the ground what, you know, where the issues are, what kind of things are happening. So what we do is, um, as part of that, our role is to look at the kind of messaging that we put out there in terms of social media, our web page, and also any um, you know, promotional campaigns that we'd be running. We just wanted to highlight what we did differently this year based on working with the likes of uh, Philip and the team in the Access Rangers. We knew working with Visit Scotland that actually people um, accessing Venture North social media and web page um, are fundamentally people who are in the area. They are visitors, they're also uh, locals in the area. They're planning what they want to do, where they're going to do, uh, where they're going to stay and things like that. So what we did this year was, and hopefully some of these graphs show you, that over the peak season in the summer, we basically doubled the amount of posts and messages that we were putting out there in terms of responsible tourism. But what I want to emphasise here is when you can see there's a large chunk there in terms of area promotion, and it's actually Rachel, um, I'm rushing through, we were going to get Rachel to speak just now, but actually Rachel is the person that maps out in the social media and web page as to what, uh, what we're doing. But area promotion is very important and we take our responsibilities there as well which is from community consultations um obviously we've got some areas that suffer from over tourism and tourism hotspots so what we would do is step away from those areas all our campaigns are looking to encourage visitors to areas with capacity and less impacted uh, by over tourism. So although the, the yellow triangle there in the pie chart is responsible key messaging, those are things that are specifically linked to the outdoor access code, um, we actually wildlife and everything like that. Do you want to just put in a little bit here, Rachel? Yeah, I'm happy to if that's all right. But yeah, uh, yeah. Just... Um, these are some examples of um, what we've identified like key responsible messaging ones. And um, as with the Highland Council and Access Rangers, the key thing for us is working with people who are on the ground who are seeing these things happening and then can tell us about them so that we can then work with that. So that first post there, that's actually, so the motorhomes um, linking to that brilliant leaflet from the Highland Council. Uh, so we have produced our own motorhome leaflet. No, we're actually linking into what's already there. 
Um, there's no point in us making something that already exists. So signposting visitors to existing resources, highlighting, I mean, we, we all know that the fires are a huge issue, something that perhaps our visitors don't. They think they're the only person who goes to a site and thinks, oh, I'll have a fire here. So just trying to get them to stop and think about it. Can they enjoy it in a more responsible way? Could they change their plans? Um, and then that third post there, the um, water sports, that's working like with Nature Scots. They have a little um, wildlife calendar as well and um, using their graphics so that again, it's that idea like with the Highland Councillor Access uh, logo, having that similar branding so that when visitors see that, they immediately think, ah, oh, I've seen that before or, oh, I already know about this. So the messages we're putting out are not new. They're existing, they're out there. And um, what we're trying to do is highlight that and work with the local organisations as well as national organisations. So our local businesses who point things out to like that cliff safety stuff. And um, we know sadly recently it's been really, really highlighted. Sorry, Cathy, back to you. Yeah, we're, we're rushing a uh, speeding through there. So one of the, the good thing is we'll be able to share this and I think some of our slides are quite self-explanatory. So uh, the other area I mentioned was our um, promotional campaigns, specifically looking at different times of the year, like autumn and winter. So hopefully you've seen in the press and on social media the, the focus on that. So it's it's trying to encourage you know visitors to think beyond those very busy seasons when really we get overstretched and encourage you know reasons to stay in the area or reasons to visit um, at different times of the year, specifically that sort of autumn winter period. Um, and we will, you can see links, the time of year and also the spread of the visitors. So certainly working with communities and businesses that have capacity uh, to, to accept visitors uh, at different times of the year. But also they may, there are areas uh, specifically, say, in the east and in uh, central and East Sutherland who have capacity actually for visitors even during the peak season. So those are the kind of things that we like to push and you know build awareness and um, you won't necessarily see all these marketing campaigns they're obviously being targeted at uh, visitors out with the area but um, and I'm glad uh, Ilsa is just sharing some links uh, to some of them for us. The other thing that we have done um, in this year as well is actually build itineraries on our web page. And again, this is about targeting visitors who are actually in the area and highlighting some of these different routes, areas um, that are, you know, basically not suffering as much from over tourism. So those are the kind of in our, like our first year we've really focused on doing that. So hopefully you'll get a bit of time. Please go to the web page uh, and on social media and learn a little bit more about that. I'm not going to show the video, so hopefully this will do, but uh, you'll get that in the presentation just to save us a bit of time. Oh. And it, it did go, but never mind. And here's the map that uh, I won't go over and ab above about that, but actually team wise, we were so grateful to hear that the Access Rangers were pleased with this. We printed 25,000 of, the, of them this year and Ilsa and Rachel, you know, had a real joy <laughs> of living through a nightmare of getting them distributed uh, and also to make sure that uh, they went to the, the key areas in the area. But one of the differences or the significant difference that we did to the tourism map was to focus on infrastructure. And that was to help visitors be aware as to say where where the next public toilets are, you know, where's a responsible area to uh, dispose of your waste. And actually the tourist information, there was a QR code that would take them to the web page. So the focus was really on infrastructure. So yes, very, uh, and the other difference was we went out to the Access Rangers through the North Highland Visitor Management Group to say, would these be useful for you? Would you like to use them? So that was the key difference. For us, and I'm going to finish very quickly so we continue and we'll share this later, is about the different ways to stay in touch with us and so that we can effectively work as, you know, a tourism voice for both communities and businesses, uh, both regionally, but also up to the national organisations like the Scottish Tourism Alliance. 
So I am just going to finish there as well as to say my personal thanks as well to all the team from the Access Rangers uh, for coming along today and uh, for all the good work and by the signs of it, the above and beyond the role that uh, you go to in your in your daily jobs. So I think if I close, Ailsa can stop the recording and uh, if the team and people on are happy to stay on an extra 